What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from High on Android and DoTechDaily.com and today I'm bringing you guys some tips to improve your experience with the Galaxy S7, Galaxy S7 Edge. Now I've got a lot of questions about how to do various things from improve your battery life to uh, customize your phone to what kind of wallpapers I use uh, and sort of what I do when I get a new phone. So I figured I'd roll all of these tips into one uh, sort of video. So I think I have seven or eight things here that I put in Google Keep. I wanna show you each of these tips. Now, unlike some other videos that I've seen uh, about things that you should do or must do, these are not things you must do. These are things, depending on what you're trying to achieve with your device, uh, that you might do to try to help them. Either improve battery life, customize it, uh, get a better experience with the keyboard, etc. So these are suggestions uh, that you sort of have to decide if sort of what I've done to fit my uh, improved experience is going to help you as well. So I'm not trying to say this is something you have to do, but these are some things that I've done that have improved my experience. So I'll go ahead and go into the Keep document. As you guys know, I'm getting old, I'm getting forgetful. So normally with my reviews, I like to put them into a little Keep document here. So Let's check it out. So the very first thing that I have here, I put top five tip because I thought this was gonna be five. The first thing is to set up multiple fingerprints. So you guys can probably see here, I have multiple fingerprints. One of them is my thumb, of course. The other one will be my other thumb in case I'm holding the phone with this hand. And then the last one you should set up, which other people have mentioned is your index finger. So if it's on the table, you can set it up that way. But the other thing you should do, and you will improve your accuracy of the fingerprint scanner if you do this, is if you go into lock screen and security, fingerprints, and you actually add multiple fingerprints for the same finger, that's gonna improve your accuracy of the scanner. So what I usually do is I'll add my right thumb multiple times. So you can actually set it up a second time, and this time try to capture the edges and you know the very tip of your thumb, even if you get a few error messages that tells you you haven't put it fully on the entire phone, that's perfectly fine. It'll definitely give you a more accurate reading with the fingerprint scanner. So the first tip, make sure you set up plenty of fingerprints and especially this index finger or this index finger. So when you have it on the table like this, you can easily get in the phone. And then also set up multiples of your most used fingerprint. I definitely always do that with the right thumb. All right, so that's the first tip there. The next one is if you're trying to achieve better battery life and you plan on sticking with TouchWiz, so you don't have a problem with TouchWiz, but you want better battery life, the S7 Edge already gets great battery life. So does the Galaxy S7 which by the way, all of these tips really go for both phones, except for the things that I'll talk about that are specific to the edge screen. But what you can do is you can go into the themes uh, portion of your settings here, and you can grab a darker theme. So the stock theme uh, sort of has some bright colors. It has you know the notification shade here, has a light color. That takes a little bit more battery life. And so you can select a darker theme, and one of the ones that I recommend, uh, which was recommended to me by one of my followers, Jamie, one of my good friends on Twitter, the material black theme. So this theme I believe does cost 99 cents, but it is a sort of really dark theme that's gonna help you get battery life because uh, the black on the AMOLED screen consumes less energy. Of course, that's why the always on display has a fully black screen except for your time. So if you apply this theme, it's gonna look like this. You've got the black wallpaper, and then you've got this really dark notification shade, and also inside your settings here, you've got this dark sort of settings, you've got the green, sort of looks like the dark material theme. And it's really, really nice. I mean, some of the uh, icons are themed uh, sort of strangely, like black on black. I think uh, one of my other Twitter followers pointed that out, James. Uh, but overall, it's a pretty good theme, and it's definitely going to help you save some battery life. So there are other options for uh, dark themes inside the settings here. You can look through the theme store and find one that suits you the best. Uh, but it's definitely going to get you a little bit better battery life having an all black theme. So that is my second tip. If you're trying to squeeze out that extra bit of battery life, if it doesn't matter to you, you can go back to the default theme and just apply that, no big deal. The next thing is to turn on the game launcher and customize settings. So if you play a lot of games, the first time you install a game, you're gonna notice that this game launcher icon pops up. It'll give you some options. You can go in there and sort of turn on these various customization settings. You can see I've got some games here. It also gives you an option to download this Finding Monsters game which I haven't, but two games that I play a lot, One More Dash and Zigzag, uh, you can see here that you can choose to save power during a game. I've got that turned off, but you can go in and actually change that to save power, save maximum power if you want. The other thing you can do is you can turn off your alerts during a game, I have that on, and you can also turn on the game tools. So you see if I go into Zigzag here using Game Launcher, 
what the game tools do. It's kind of hard to see because that thing was red screen there. But in the very bottom corner there, you've got a little icon. And if you click on that icon, it brings up a number of options. You've got no alerts during the game on, lock recent and back key. So you can choose to toggle that on and off. You can minimize your game, take a screenshot, or have the screen record set to on. And you can go into the game launcher, of course, and then toggle all of these things. So you can turn the game tools on or off. So if you're a heavy gamer, you might want to have on a various number of these options and have them at your disposal there in the bottom left of your game. You can turn on screenshots, record to share with a friend, etc. So that's definitely a useful tip, and it's something that's new with the Galaxy S7, Galaxy S7 Edge. So you'll want to do that, especially if you like to play games. Uh, the next thing I highly recommend with the Galaxy S7, Galaxy S7 Edge that I do, uh, you may like Samsung's keyboard, but I am not a big fan of Samsung's keyboard whatsoever. So I really like to turn on a third-party keyboard, and the two that I use are Google Keyboard as well as SwiftKey. So you can see here that I am using the, well, if it would stop loading, you can see here that I'm using the Google Keyboard. So let me go into Hangouts maybe, and we can just see here. So... You can see here in Hangouts, if I go to write a message, you can see I've got the Google Keyboard installed. So you go find the Google Keyboard and then it'll make sure it'll walk you through this setup. So as soon as you install it, just open it up, it'll walk you right through. Same thing with SwiftKey. SwiftKey is a really an, another great one. Uh, Microsoft recently bought them. Actually, they first pushed out their first update today. So we'll see how SwiftKey goes now that Microsoft owns them, but I've been using them for a while as well. All right. so. That is the next tip there. Set up a third-party keyboard if you don't like the Samsung one. If you do, then keep using the Samsung one. No big deal. The next thing is to set up the Apps Edge for the S7 Edge. So, of course, that involves your various customized apps here. You can customize these by going into the settings for the Edge screen. You've got your various Edge panels here. You can see I've got Yahoo Sports turned on, but there's a bunch of other options. So you'll want to customize whatever it is that you want there. And you can also sort of adjust the edge panel settings so that you have the size that you want, the transparency, also which size the edge panel appears on. And then the other thing you'll want to do is set up the apps that you're actually using here. So you can see I've chosen various apps to customize here and then various shortcuts as well inside the apps edge. So you've got various shortcuts, compose message, view bookmarks. If you don't use Samsung browser, that one's not going to be very useful. Take a selfie, take a picture of panorama, take a picture in auto mode, uh, and toggle some things with the dialer. And then also I have my people edge, which you'll also want to set up with your favorite contacts. I only have four, my mother, uh, my fiance, my best friend, and then also my grandmother there. And then of course you get your Yahoo Sports. I have Yahoo Sports stories and scores on for my favorite team. So you definitely want to set up your people edge, your apps edge, and all of your preferences for how you want the edge screen to look. That's definitely an added benefit of the S7 Edge. So definitely make sure you go in and do that. And the next thing that I want to talk about is to choose to turn on or disable the always on mode. So you guys know that the S7, S7 Edge has this always on mode available. As you can see right here, I've got the always on mode with this clock theme and I've got this background here. You can choose to, to change the background and you can also toggle this on and off. If you go to settings and display, you can choose to have your icon backgrounds and various other things up top for your regular display. And then in the center, you have the always on display, which you can click. And then you can choose to show your content and what kind of content you want, clock, calendar, or custom image. And you can also choose your background image. They've got a various dark images again to save the battery. And then you can also choose your clock style. And again, I chose a custom clock style as well. And you can also choose to turn this off right here. So you can toggle it on or off. So if you want to save maximum battery, it's definitely a good idea to leave it off because you're going to drain about, in my testing, about a half percent uh, extra per hour, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little more depending on the day, but it's right at about a half percent for the average. So if you don't want to lose that half percent extra, you can turn that off. And again, always on display doesn't offer, offer any extra functionality when it comes to the S7 Edge like it does with Motorola or the Nexus. So you may want to leave it off if you don't need that always on time. Uh, the next thing is you'll want to get a good wallpaper. A lot of people have asked me about this, which is why I put it in here. And they asked me what app I use for wallpapers. So I get wallpapers from all over the place. You guys saw I had the Android N wallpaper, which uh, leaked out. Well, people posted yesterday after they downloaded Android N on their Nexus devices. I already put it on my 6P. 
But I also use the app Backdrops, which is an app you can get from the Play Store. It's a great wallpaper app. Unfortunately, as you can see, my internet, my T-Mobile 4G is going down for whatever reason. I don't know why my modem's not working. But this is a great app that you can download and you can get some free collections of wallpapers. Oh, there we go. You can see some of the free collections. They've got an Android collection. They've got a Trinity collection. A couple of these collections are paid, so you have to pay like the Pro Pack. Uh, and then they've got more collections coming soon. So I highly recommend Backdrops. People ask a lot where I get some of my wallpapers from. And some of my favorite wallpapers came from this app. So definitely check it out if you're interested in wallpapers. The last two options here, really if you want to get kind of advanced and you don't like TouchWiz's look and feel, you can go ahead and install a third-party launcher. I've talked about one of my favorites in the past, and one of those is Action Launcher 3. So if you take a look here, I have Action Launcher 3 installed, which you can get from the Play Store, and that's going to go ahead and put a custom launcher on your phone, which then will remove some of the look and feel of the TouchWiz launcher. You can see here, you've got your familiar sort of app drawer that looks more stock, and then of course, if you don't set it to be the default, it'll go right back to TouchWiz. But all you need to do in order to make this work very nicely is go into the Action Launcher 3 settings, set it as default, and then that's going to be your default launcher. So once I'm done with my review of the S7 Edge, I'll definitely revert back to Action Launcher 3. I've just been using TouchWiz to sort of give an overall overview of the launcher that comes on the phone out of the box. Now the other thing you might want to do if you install the third-party launcher is to go ahead and also use a custom icon pack. So a custom icon pack is going to give you a different look and feel to your phone, give you a nice way to customize it, sort of get it matching with your wallpaper, etc. So if we go right into my last tip here and look at the custom icon pack that I use and prefer, that's the Glim Dark Icon Pack. It's right here, so you can see this is the light version of the Glim Dark Icon Pack, and it will theme your phone very, very nicely. There is a paid version, which I also use. Just wanted to show this to you. So if you go into Action Launcher 3, you can then apply the Glim Dark Icon Pack. You can see the Glim Dark icons look really, really beautiful. You've got sort of this dark material idea. And then, of course, you can play around with some of the features in Action Launcher 3. You've got beautiful icons, and also you have a really nice custom launcher that replaces the TouchWiz launcher. So these are of course things you can try if you want to customize your phone, you want to give it a different look and feel, install third-party launcher, install a custom wallpaper, custom keyboard, and custom icon packs. So I know a lot of you guys already know these things, but some people who watch the channel, they don't know about them. So I wanted to go ahead and do this video uh, to show people these things that they should try when they get the S7 Edge. Hopefully it'll help you improve your experience of the S7 Edge. Feel free to drop me a question below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer you. You can also find me writing at my site, dopetechdaily.com. Hit me up on Google+, Twitter, and Instagram at the links in the description. And you can like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I really, really appreciate it as it helps out my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.